Your power as a witch is always present. Feeling it come and go in waves is the easy part. How you shape it, learn to control it, move it. Now this is the part that takes work. Hello, wild ones. It's Heather Lynn here. If we haven't met before, I am the Wild Woodland Witch. And today we are talking about witchcraft and herbalism. I want to show you how I have over time slowly brought witchcraft into my herbalist practice. And today I welcome you. Please do click the like, the notification bell, and join us here more often. You are most welcome in this community. If you want to support my work, leave a comment. And if you want to connect more, I'm here. You just have to reach out. A wild witch, may your energy move freely, combining your gifts with the elements of the land. So let us focus on ideas to infuse that power, wild one. And let's begin. Infuse, 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 and awaken to your power, stitch to something, journeying to be something, crafted, created, and born. Through incantation, affirmation statements, and my favorite, sigils, we witches can infuse, combining our own will with our creative forces and the power of our tools, we can move magic. We will end our time together with a cauldron spell for resurrection, and I will walk you through it should you choose to craft your own. For you were born to use this power wild one. Let's infuse. You have a few options for that end result to take the magic you infuse in through plant potions. You have tea, herbal infusions, which are stronger teas with plants with low essential oils. You have infused oils and many options of the kind of oil you wanna bring in here. Vegetable glycerin for either an elixir, which is part alcohol and part glycerin, or just straight glycerin tincture. And you have witch hazel that you can infuse and you can infuse straight alcohol known as a tincture and you can see that in my other videos I will link one above I know it can seem like a lot of examples but I wanted to show you as many as I could in this video for the plant witch has the power to infuse with her bottles and bottles and yes more bottles <laughs> These creations are the fuel for a most magical life. The key is not to get overwhelmed. Pick one, practice, master, and move to another. Infuse it into your life. Go slow and make it be a long-term journey. Personally, I have a goal this year to learn to make every self-care product that I use. In an effort to cut down on plastic purchasing and eliminate unnecessary chemicals, this is my gesture to the earth. This is my offering. I just want to feel that self-sufficiency. So stick around my channel if you want to learn as I do along the way. Let's craft a love potion. In this video, you are witnessing me living my herbalist life, and it's a lot of moving parts. There are probably about six different medicines or products that I'm making during the filming of this video, and I don't wish to share all of those recipes here with you today. That would be almost an hour long video. <laughs> What I do want to do is give you the foundational knowledge of an herbalist witch, 
and kind of break down the steps I take for infusing magic. I promise we can make one potion together, and of course, I chose my aphrodisiac infused glycerin, but we will get to that. First, I just want to go through the basics, and I promise it will be worth the wait for that love potion, which is coming up. In spellcraft, we use various forces to pull in magic, but in herbalism, we have more than just the energetic benefits of a spell. We also have the medicinal benefits of the plants themselves. I love this union because knowledge is power, and the science behind these medicinal benefits really aids me as an herbalist witch as a solitary witch, and as a non-religious witch. And whatever kind of witch you are, perhaps it will help you too. So you're probably thinking, okay, the foundation of herbalist witchcraft must be the plants and the tools. But actually, it's the moon and your intentions that are at the top of the list. You can craft sigils and write affirmations, speak words during your herbal spell time. I love poetry, I love to sing to my potions. This step is very powerful as it is what sets your intention. I like to craft and harvest a potion on about the full or new moon. I also do occasionally harvest on the half moon, but that depends on the plants and the infusion time needed. You can only learn this by experimenting. But my next video is how to work with the moon and herbs as well as how to craft two books to keep track for your potions, recipes, and your moon times. So stay tuned for that wild once, and let's craft this love potion. I use the main strong sound of a word that adds power of that word to the potion. I also love using this black paper and writing in white because white is purity and innocence. It is new energy traveling among the stars the darkness symbolizes the unknown or the void that transforms. This is where growth is born, and I keep my oils in the dark as well. There is a moon quality to this process, and when heat is added to the oils as we bring other forces in to make salves and creams, the light or the force of fire is then applied. It's very emotional work and truly meaningful work. And I have to say, I feel more like a witch when I am practicing this type of magic. If you've been on my channel before, you know I am a true green witch. I am a true forest witch. I feel the most alive in and the most magical in so many different places in my craft, but herbalism is this place where I just feel like the image of what a witch is to me comes alive and I am the one in the story. Okay, back to the spell. After I use my tools to open up and activate ingredients in dried plants, I pour over the vegetable glycerin, which is all the way up to the tippy top, as not to let air into the mixture, which air can bring mold and bacteria, so you just want to look out for that. I usually top off a vegetable glycerin tincture with 15-20% to 20 water. I usually boil this water or you can use specific water that is made without impurities called distilled water. The water also helps to change the consistency of the glycerin because glycerin is quite thick and sticky and it helps a lot of the plants release so much easier to have some water content there. Certain herbs actually release their essence much easier if water is present. That's not always the case for every plant and again you would learn that along the way. For this love spell and love potion, I love using the vegetable glycerin and product because I can add it to wine or tea and it's sweet and I myself add it to my already strong red clover tea infusion that I make on a date night day with my honey. We drink this throughout the day and it's really for me but he drinks it in solidarity. If you're worried about mold or bacteria and you're new to this, you can also make this as a tincture. 
just pour the herbs in the jar and pour alcohol on top of the herbs still mixing it for four to six weeks still putting in your intentions still doing everything the same just not using the vegetable glycerin and the water so it's purely alcohol based i recommend vodka for this and i will either link a video below on how to do this or link one above and when you complete that you can add half honey to the final product this is called an elixir and it'll allow you to have that watery quality and that sweetness very similar to a vegetable glycerin tincture the herbs for this one sit for about six weeks i move the bottle around back and forth for a few times a few times a week and when i do this for those few minutes i am adding in more incantations if I have a sigil on top, it helps me to get my base language, and I'm often saying that sigil, those sounds. So I just wanna explain real quickly. Putting a sigil on a jar really does not very much. It's really activating your memory, your intentions, and infusing that in as the potion, as the herbs are releasing their essence, so are you infusing your will and your desires and your creative forces into that potion. And then when you are taking that potion, more memories come back, more intentions come back. And this is just the science of how most spell work works. And this is how you take sigil work and activate it into this sort of living, um, breathing, everyday life experience as you're taking in herbs, making herbs, making teas, and just living an herbless life. For this love potion, my process is to start drinking red clover as an infused tea, which I make often because she is really good for hormone balancing red clover is everyone's lover she is great for maiden mother and crone about midday i start adding the tincture in two droppers full to one eight ounce glass of tea or water and by the time it's 6 p.m watch out <laughs> all of a sudden um life becomes very easy for me to know exactly what my desires are and i'll let go of my work and i'll just focus on myself or my partner and myself and our time together but you can definitely do this if you are alone and it's just as effective if you know what i mean deep in the forest below the earth's floor straight down among the roots and dark soil you can find a seed ready just waiting to be born she is ready, alive with flowering forces. Like her, we all have forces waiting to be born, ideas waiting to be given light, resurrection. In a way, this love spell is a resurrection spell in some regards. And the resurrection spell I'm about to share is really for resurrecting whatever we choose to resurrect. This is a plant I've been working with recently, Kala Lily. It's one of my favorites. Uh, recently just found an opportunity to buy one and sort of start working with her. Um, Kala Lily is all about resurrection. And um, yeah, I am, I'm really enjoying the exchange. I have put some notes for you on this resurrection spell below and some other recipes too. I watered her, spoke to her, dreamt of her until she spoke back, and I pulled out my cauldron to let that light in. I will leave you now to watch how it ends in quiet contemplation so you can vision with me and dream of what you wish to resurrect this spring. And may I be the first to say, Happy Ostara to you, Happy Spring Equinox to you, my fellow witch. My hope is that it will be marvelous whatever you craft, whatever you resurrect. My hope is that your magic is truly blessed. Know you are who you are as a witch right now, and it is valid. Your ideas, your dreams, your creations, and my wild ones come and find me again.